Right, that tells me we're live, folks. I know you will tell me when you can see us. Um, morning, it's me. I, well, I know it's not me. I've got the placeholder up at the moment. Um, but as soon as I know that I'm live on LinkedIn, I'll put myself on screen. I'll start talking to you folk as well. Um, and then I'll be talking to Carl Elwood about the, the Business Leaders Wine Club. Right, I can see that I am live on LinkedIn now. So I'm just doing the things that, that I do up here to make everything work. I'm going to look down at the screen a little bit every so often, um, but I'm going to be talking to, to Carl. I'm going to be talking to Carl about the Business Leaders Wine Club. Um, Carl Elwood runs Elwood Wines down in Brighton. He's the founder of the Business Leaders Wine Club as well. I'm going to ask you to do that thing that I always ask you to do. If if you can see me, can you put a comment mm. down there to let, let us know that you can see us? Um, let us know that we're live. I've got someone giving us likes. I've got someone giving us thumbs up. Um, so I know that some of you are here already. Um, I'm just doing my thing. I'm just looking down at the screen and making sure that I've shared this in the appropriate places. Um, one day... I'll be famous and rich enough to have a tech team to do all of this for me, but certainly now is is not the day for that to happen. Whoever's giving me the likes, whoever's giving me the celebrations, um, thank you very much indeed. I know you don't want to hear from me. Hi, Debbie. I know that someone's watching us. That's good. I know hey. that we've got an audience. <laughs> Debbie Gilbert's here. Um, actually, that reminds me, just as I bring Carl on screen... Let's remember to do things like that so people know hey. that we've got their comments. Good morning, Carl Elwood. Hi. Good morning, Steph. Good morning. Thank you very much for this opportunity. It's very, uh, very exciting. My very first uh, LinkedIn Live. So um, I'm just entrusting you completely, Steph. I am your in your hands. <laughs> that, uh, that's gone well so far in the last <laughs> 10 minutes, hasn't it? The bits that people don't see before we go live. Um, so the yeah. for the benefit of the people who who don't know you, Carl, um, tell them a little bit about who you are and what it is that you do. Yeah, well, my name's Carl Elwood, and I run an independent wine business, an online business called Elwood Wine Selections. And in essence, I've uh, throughout my career in the wine trade, I've been fascinated in the stories about wine, about the people who make the wines. And I think there's always every wine does have a story to tell. And I know when I talk about wine to customers, presentations and lectures and so on, that there's only so much in technical information that many are going to take on board. But the information that always resonates and that people tend to remember and in particular talk to their friends about are the stories about the people behind the wine, the personality behind the label, as I like to call it. And that interests me as well. And that's why I actually ended up in the wine trade, because working for uh, a very celebrated uh, winemaker, very celebrated now, made me realise actually people pick grapes. And as a kid growing up, although there was wine, I never really had a great interest in the stuff. But actually going to France, spending about two weeks, just over two weeks, picking grapes, being with a group of people who were, we were just out in the fields day in, day out. And then in the cellar, pressing those grapes, hearing the sound of the juice trickling down from the press into the tanks below. Then looking at the barrels that were selected for aging the wine. And that when that wine actually did arrive in the UK, it was my wine. And I've always remembered that. And that's really when I'd say my interest in wine started by seeing where it actually started, where it came from and communi communicating that story from the vineyard to the table is really what I'm about. And uh, that's what really interests me. And talking to private clients who I deal with predominantly or businesses who want to learn a bit more about wine themselves so that they can talk to their clients about it and share stories about wine. So yeah, in short, Steph, I think that that's really my story about why I do what I do and why I like what I do. I actually, I didn't know all of that about you, Carl. Um, I'm, I'm actually going to do something which I was going to do much later on, but I'm going to, I'm just going to, point everyone to your 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 website because anyone thinking about buying wines 
particularly at this time of year as we head towards Christmas, and I know you've mentioned it already, um, should go and take a look at Carl's website and um, go and find Carl on LinkedIn as well. There he is on LinkedIn. Let's put us back on screen. Yeah, I didn't Perfect. I didn't know that bit about you, the stories behind the wine itself. I mean my my mouth's watering already because I, I <laughs> quite like wine to my detriment sometimes. But it, it, is that what you talk to people about when people when people ask you about what wines they should buy, what sort of things do you do you like to find out about them? Um, it's interesting. What's their story? What's their relationship with wine? In the sense that, for example, I run this thing called the Wine Discovery Program, where it aims to help um, customers to articulate what they like and don't like. Often find, for example, you may say, um, oh, I like Malbec. Just to give a good example of a very popular red wine, uh, but not knowing why. And so finding the why someone likes a particular wine is great, as the opposite of that is someone might say, I don't like Chardonnay. Well, why is that? Well, that could be because of earlier experiences with Chardonnay that were heavily oaked. And so the, so the assumption is that Chardonnay is always oaked. So what I enjoy doing is actually uh, a bit like a profiler, trying to understand what customers like. When's the last bottle they had they enjoyed? Why did they enjoy it? What did they eat with it? Was it with friends? Was it on holiday? Just trying to get a, a picture. And I think sometimes when you then find a wine that, that resonates with them because there's a story about it, something that they like and the style that works, uh, that you really do find it's like a, as connecting people together, which will go on to what we're going to be uh, talking about uh, in a little while. So, yeah, I hope that answers the question. That's really how I like to try and talk about wine to customers. It's not expecting them to be an expert. It's not expecting someone to have a great deal of knowledge about wine. And I, I myself don't even pretend to be a great uh, authority about all the knowledge there is about wine. There are many others who know far, far more technical details than I do. But I like to think I'm a good communicator and understanding uh, what it is someone likes and then getting into the why. And that's the fun bit. That's the bit I really like doing. It's like unlocking a safe. And within that are the perfect wines that they want. They just don't know it yet. And that's when it's really fun to helping them discover that. There's so much in what you've just said. Um, the bit about unlocking the safe, I, I thought was amazing. So many, so many people, including me, actually think that the you, you asked a question about what wine should I have, and you tell someone what you're going to be eating with it, and and that's that's the only basis on which the the decision's made. Something that you just said was so lovely and so relevant to our business audience because so many people feel that they've got to wait until they're experts to to start talking about something and there's 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 always an expert who knows a little bit more and and I honestly believe that being being an enthusiast being passionate about your stuff being honest as you are that you don't feel you're the world's expert on everything but you you've certainly got a relationship with people I, I think something that I am going to say whilst we're okay. here for those people watching or listening to us if you've got any questions about wine or network or networking or business, pop them in the comments below and we'll bring them up on screen and and answer them. You you also believe, Carl, which is sort of what we're here to, to talk about, that wine can can really help with building those business relationships along the way. Absolutely. Um, the idea, I mean, that's really where, that's the premise, basically, of the Business Leaders Wine Club. Um, the origins of, of the idea really stem from a wine tasting um, that we ho hosted back in April of this year. And over the last previous 18 months, really, I'd sort of dipped back into LinkedIn, having stepped away from it, but having better understand a better understanding of networking, thanks to, thanks to your book as well, Steph, and actually just getting out there and networking, is that one of the trickiest elements, I think, of when going into a room in networking full of people you don't know is what's your first question and i think over time i developed um, a more a more comfortable style being more myself not selling just getting to know people so over those sort of 18 months comes to this uh, tasting in april and of course looking around the room quite a lot of the attendees 
were the very people I'd met at all these LinkedIn events, uh, sorry, LinkedIn networking events and were connected on LinkedIn, some of whom I'd never met face to face, but many of whom were curious enough to know what it is that you do, Carl, you know, let's see you in action. Let's see these wines that you talk about. And it became almost like a networking event in its own right. Now, I didn't think of it like that at the time. But what did interest me was that after the event on LinkedIn in particular, I was getting a lot of messages, direct messages saying, really sorry, Mr. Your wine and networking event, Carl. I'd really love to come along to the next one. When is it? Now, as I just said, it wasn't intended to be a wine and networking event, but naturally, if you get enough business people together in any setting, networking is going to happen. We're always building relationships, whether it's professional or personal. But what I found really intriguing, having called back a few of these people and doing quite a bit of research into this, is that actually wine becomes a really good common denominator. Imagine that, you know, you've got a load of people coming into a room who may or may not know much about wine, but they don't know everybody in the room. So if you come up to somebody and you see they've got a, a glass of wine in their hand, it can get the conversation going by simply asking, oh, what do you think of that wine? Do you like this? What's your favorite? Rather than feeling under pressure to sort of say, oh, you know, my name's Carl Elwood. What do you do? It, it just felt a more natural way to start the conversation and networking. I mean, as you often say, Steph, in your messages, um, and many will know it is when you meet someone, it's the beginning of a conversation. You don't know how long that conversation is going to start. But wouldn't it be amazing if you did meet someone at a networking event where you could just talk about wine and you didn't feel under pressure to have to talk about what it is that you do. But it started a conversation that may lead on to a one to one and so on and so forth. So that's why the Business Leaders Wine Club was born, uh, using wine as a very easy uh, way to, to soften um, the, the first occasion of, of a networking event, an icebreaker, if you like, it's a popular way of putting it. So yeah, that's how this is all came about. It, it seems, it almost seems so obvious, doesn't it? Um, I, I, so, you know, one of those really obvious things that no one else has thought of, Carl, and, and, and that's what's absolutely brilliant about it, because you're you're talking about it and I, I i know i've mentioned to you we we have a new wine bar in whitney um gonna shout out to the wonderful people at camden whitney and we we <laughs> i'm gonna say popped that was the intention we popped in there last night and there were a, a few other folk in there and the stuff that we got talking about at first was oh what's what's that you're drinking because that mm. looks interesting and we've we've literally come away with some new friends um and and you know checked in with with, with old friends as well and it, it looks like what you're doing is is putting an extension around that to to help people to start those conversations i, I wrote something about ditching the elevator pitch the other day people worry all the time about what, how do you approach people at a networking event but you're literally giving people something to, to talk about. Basically, yes. Um, but also, this is the other thing, having spoken to a few, let's say, more seasoned networkers who become much more selective about where they go. You know, they've done all the, the, the legwork and they may have a team, a younger team who go in about um, to different networking organisations and that's their focus. And therefore, the brand, the business is being seen and heard around different organizations. But there are many very experienced, knowledgeable uh, business owners, business leaders, who don't perhaps venture out to many networking events as possible. So it was really to try and find an alternative, and one that actually, where if they, we know that they have an enjoyment in wine, that they actually think, well, actually, you know, I might go to this one. This one looks like fun. This will not necessarily feel like yet another networking event. Um, I mean, I was even slightly reticent about using the word networking because there are so many. And I just could vis envisage the eyes rolling and say, oh, well done, Elwood, another networking event. But I wanted to, to try and bring in something different. You know, you have golf is you know a, a celebrated networking of you know golf and networking book clubs but there wasn't really anything specifically about wine so if it gets the seasoned networkers business leaders out there and i know from my own experiences that if you have younger 
um, up and coming business owners asking the more seasoned networkers, shall we say, um, for advice or a question or curious about something or their experience with any difficulties or challenges and opportunities that came their way, that I know people are more than happy to help, to share their knowledge. And that again is, I think, where, from my experience, I wanted to offer something I felt added real value to my connections, my network. Um, and I believe this is something I can do. I can put on some really good events or some really interesting wines, wines that you wouldn't normally see at a networking event, to be, to be fair. But it adds value by interest in wine, great, come along. Interested in making some really good, strong connections, great, come along. And for those who haven't networked or been out as frequent as they used to, an opportunity actually to share the knowledge that you have uh, with, some, with a really good small group of people. So that's really part of the aim as well. I'm going to come back to all of that in a second. And for anyone who isn't already connected with Carl, this is where you'll find him on LinkedIn. Um, I've tagged Carl in the comments. Oh, just jumping away from that by mistake. Sorry. Um, I sometimes forget I'm, I'm doing that. I've tagged Carl Sorry. Um, in the post anyway. No, 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 my, my fault completely. I've tagged Carl in the post. Um, if you're not connected with him, go and find Carl. Um, he's based down in Brighton, and this is where the Business Leaders Wine Club takes place. You can see all of the, the details of it just there. Um, but like I say, if you've not already collect, connected with Carl, please do. Let's pop Carl and I back on screen. What, what you've said there again is just so sensible because we so often... I can see your reticence in using the word networking because we think about networking that you're going to turn up and stand up and tell everyone what you do. Um, but just sitting around and chatting to people and taking advice and um, just, yeah, chatting, as I say, the bit about what you do comes across pretty naturally then, doesn't it, without without having to force it. So then you start to to actually build relationships with people. Hopefully, that's the idea. And um, I mean, look, wine, uh, I think, can be a subject of utter fear as well. I mean, I know you, you alluded to that with uh, your, you know, your comment about not necessarily having to have the knowledge. And I think many, many business owners might have aspirations that uh, their business will take off, will be a great success, and they'll have all these wonderful ideas of what they hope to have the house, the car, the holidays, be able to support their family financially, etc., and all those sorts of things. Maybe even having a wine cellar, but maybe just being able to enjoy wine more, maybe drink it less often, but be able to, uh, to appreciate and enjoy finer wines, if you like, um, and be able to understand that and appreciate that. Uh, so it is hopefully also going away. So you make connections, but maybe leave a little bit of wine knowledge as well. And I mean, if all that happens, I'm, I'm delighted. That's that's really the key the key element of it. Um, but before I forget, I should also just add, you know, it's not just me. I mean, I, there, there are some co-founders in this as well, and I think it's important to to emphasize that. So we have uh, Sandra Murphy, who's business mentor. We have Alex Ryan from One Hundred and One Marketing, and Chris Mansfield, who you know, uh, Steph from Fusion. Um, each of us have connected through networking in Sussex. Each of us are part of a, a very thriving, dynamic, and I think a really, really exciting business community throughout Sussex. And I'm very proud to be part of that community. And it's always a pleasure to, to meet existing and make new connections within that. But because we're part of a, a team, you know, it's not just me. Yes, I can help, you know, curate the wines. But between the four of us, we're very we're well connected without wishing to sound too uh, grand about it but that i think it's the value that we as a group can offer and the quality of the connections that's really really what is important and that's one of the big driving forces behind it so if if you know or you want to you know connect with me that would be fantastic but please also look out for sandra murphy alex ryan and chris mansfield as well because they're a very integral part of of uh, the team that is behind the Business Leaders Wine Club. So I didn't want to forget to give those guys a shout out. 
No, absolutely respect for that. I do know Chris and looking forward to actually seeing Chris um, as well as seeing you, as well as seeing everyone else um, when I come down to Brighton in a couple of weeks because yeah. you've you've had the inaugural event um, of the Business Leaders Wine Club and then the next one is coming up on the 26th of October. Um, and you've got, yes. some, you've got some tickets left for that, I understand. Yeah, there are a few tickets remaining. Um, the theme behind this one, again, will be selection of wines. You get a welcome glass of um, Breaky Bottom, which is this brilliant sparkling uh, wine producer just outside of Lewis. And then there'll be some wines to taste. But what we're doing uh, this time that was a little different to the first event, although there's always cheese and really good cheese, and you know what's not to like about that, but we're going to, with the help of the cheese man, Tony, we're going to have with each wine a specific cheese that's been chosen to complement the wine or the wine to complement the cheese, whichever way you want to look at it, so that you will taste the wine, taste the cheese. And at the end of it, we'll just have a little quiz to see which was considered the best cheese and wine match. And then you'll be able to go and, and go back, retaste the wines that you like the most and have some more of the cheeses. Um, so apart from it being a bit of fun, um, and also to talk not just about wine, but about cheese, um, but also to learn a little bit about the relationship that food has with wine. And cheese and wine probably is the most natural um, way to approach this because it is very personal, but it's a very important part of, of enjoying wine. And what I, one thing I always say at events, particularly if there's food involved, is that if you've tried a wine and you don't like it or you're not sure about it, OK, fine. Try it with some food see if your relationship with that wine has changed and you may be surprised actually that the wine you thought originally was your favorite may be not necessarily your favorite and the wine you like the least may well be so if that sounds like something that intrigues you um, or you'd like to learn more about it then hopefully if there's some tickets still available and you're able to book a place then um, you know, it'll be great to, to see you there and hear what you think and, and this isn't like events where they say We've only got a few tickets available. I, I know um, when I spoke to you a couple of days ago, this is only for about 30 people, isn't it? And I, I know you'd sold more than 20 tickets at, at the last count already for um, for the October event. You're, you're not having many, many people at this. You're, you're, you're keeping it intimate. That's it. I mean, one of the difficulties, I think, with some of networking often is that you see the same people time and time again. Either it's too large a group, so you naturally tend to congregate sometimes with the people that you know. With smaller groups, obviously you have more of that quality time available to speak to people, to really get the conversation started. Um, but also by hopefully oversubscribing, being oversaturated with bookings, which is the aim deliberately so that every time you attend an event there's a good chance that half of the attendees won't have been at the previous one so that every time you are able to make it then there's another core group of people that you won't have seen and even if there are some that you saw previously at least you can continue the conversation so it's to keep it fresh and to try and encourage a change a new mix for every single event that is which i feel is a really important part of of how and why an event like Business Leaders Wine Club can be successful for everyone who comes along. Well, I'm I'm coming down from Oxford for it, as you know. Um, yeah. And I'm really looking forward to it. So pretty much everyone in the room, um, with the exceptions of of you and Chris, will be new to me, and I'll be I'll be new to everyone else in the room. It it, it so ties in with all of the stuff that I talk about about not trying to persuade people to like and trust you, but just you're creating the conditions where people can decide who are the other folk in the room they like, who are the other folk they, they want to keep in touch with afterwards. And, and you're, you're just giving them a very relaxed atmosphere to, to do that in by the sound of it. I'm, I'm just going to pause and say, mm -hmm. if anyone does have any questions about this, pop them in the comments below. I'm just about to put the link to the Business Leaders Wine Club um, if if anyone is, is close enough by that they want to book tickets. I'm just about to put that in the chat as well. But you've, it, it feels like a very, um, what's the word I'm looking for, sort of mature way to network, um, without <laughs> wishing to age either us or any of the other people who, who are going along. Yeah, I mean, I, it's a very, the aim is to have a very diverse um, 
group of individuals, you know, and I think it, that's really important. I mean, that's very reflective of the business community here in Sussex, as I'm sure it is throughout the UK anyway. And I think through that diversity, we're going to have much, you know, great conversations, great ideas. It's about collaboration as well. Business is so important, working with others. There is so much business out there, you know, that we there's more than enough for us all. But I think we can often find in sometimes when you least expect it, great ideas can form, great collaborative ideas can happen and opportunities are just there to be taken. And sometimes we have to create that luck for ourselves. So yeah, I mean, it's, um, I would say it's a very broad age group, very diverse, uh, very much um, the reflect of the community around here, but very relaxed, informal, so no prior knowledge is required. And actually, if you have zero knowledge, but always wanted to uh, to find out, but was afraid to ask, I think it's a perfect environment because um, you'll be more than welcome and you'll be able to taste at your own pace. No one's going to be asking you questions really about the wines. It's your opinion. And at the end of the day, there's no right or wrong about wine. That's what's so great and liberating about it. It's your opinion is as valid as mine. So whatever you say or think of a wine, whether you like it or not, however you describe it, is fine. I mean, I often say to customers, you know, when they're talking about how to describe a wine, if a wine smells of bananas to you, then fine. It smells of bananas. That's that's not right. It's not wrong. It's just that's your opinion about it. And that's absolutely fine. So, yeah, it's uh, hopefully you'd find it a very relaxed and informal environment and a great opportunity to to network at the same time. I'm looking forward to the English wine that you've talked about already. Um, that that sounds really exciting. Changing changing the subject from the Business Leaders Wine Club a little mm. bit, and I I appreciate that you insist that you, you you don't feel you're an expert on these things. But are there any <laughs> particular trends coming up for this Christmas in wine? Is there something that you think people are going to be buying plenty of this Christmas, or? or something new on the market, which which people should look out for this Christmas? Trent, it's an interesting one. I mean, we've seen um, a lot more interest in alcohol consumption, shall we say. And I think the trends now, people are looking more about the alcohol content in a wine. Climate change has obviously focused a lot of interest and attention towards that. The more traditional winemaking regions of the world have seen Obviously, temperatures rise as, as an effect of that. Of course, alcohol levels have risen. So I think as we search for uh, wines with more modest alcohol levels, we're looking and discovering into new new territories and new regions. Spain, I think, is a fantastic region to, to, to explore and discover. But back here in our backyard, of course, Sussex and, and, and the UK as a whole, the wine industry in, in the UK is just extraordinary. Tiny quantity, sadly, um, but that's always going to be the case at this stage. But what we're seeing now is a greater interest. So I feel particularly over the last 12 months, there's been more interest in Sussex sparkling wine. I say Sussex because that's where I'm based, really. I know more about that than perhaps other counties in the UK. So if there is a, if there is a trend, I'd say it's becoming more... Um, interested and willing to try different English wines and not just sparkling wines. So perhaps that's one interesting trend that's um, that's worth seeking out. Yeah, it absolutely should be. Um, if we've got a wine industry in this country, then it, it makes perfect sense to to support it. I'm just going you, yeah. you you gave a piece of advice the other day. I'm just going to put your website back up on screen in, in a second. Um, when when we were at our networking event on Monday morning, you mm. were urging people to think about their Christmas wines now rather than leave it till the last yeah. minute. And I, I'm, I'm yeah. guessing from some of the stuff that you've said about English wines, if the quantities are that small, it, it makes perfect sense to to jump on something that you, you, you think you'll like before it sells out, I guess. Yeah, I think the point um, I was trying to make then was that if, you i mean for example if you're thinking of corporate gifts the difficulty may be in logistics um, we experience quite a, a sluggish um, route from to market in terms of the distribution getting the stock landing landed in the warehouse packed 
packaged on a van, delivered out to uh, the recipient. It took a lot longer than usual. And I think with a shortage in drivers, for example, and perhaps I think there still is a shortage in warehouse staff, hauliers, there's a huge pressure on the whole logistical system at the moment, that there could be delays. I know that, for example, the big supermarkets have been loading up long ago now. I mean, a lot of the big champagne houses, for example, have sold out of quite a lot of their stock already because the supermarkets uh, have already bought it. But if you're looking to buy gifts for as corporate gifts, sooner rather than later would be better. And I think that's probably what I had in mind, because um, if you left it till mid to late November previously, it wouldn't be so much of an issue. My concern for my business would be not being able to fulfill those orders. Uh, so I would urge to consider getting organized just a little bit sooner. And then at least you know you've got the stock, you know you've got it secured, everything's ready, and then arrange to deliver. I think it would probably be wiser to do it sooner rather than later, just in case we're hit with uh, another uh, distribution challenge that we did have um, experience of last year. And I know not just us, but I know that was across, across the UK in a number of industries. We, we've got postal strikes between now and Christmas. Um, As, just, there's that, yeah. Just, just for example, so yep. um, the other delivery services are going to be stretched. There's, there's no two people will be looking for, for alternatives for that. Um, Absolutely, Carl. I will. I'll see you virtually, but I'll see you in a couple of weeks down in Brighton itself when I'll be down for the Business Leaders Wine Club. Um, Absolutely, I've really enjoyed talking to you this morning. If if anyone's got any questions that they want to ask after we finish being live, then do still pop them in the comments. I'll. I'll tag Carl in them. If you haven't followed Carl Elwood, go and find him on LinkedIn and follow him. Um, it's the wrong time of the day for me to be talking about wine because what I really need to do is work and what I really want to do now um, is spend the rest of the day on your website, actually. Um, and what? yeah, and, and make my thoughts about Christmas. Um, thanks ever so much for your time this morning. Carl. No, that's all right, Steph. And I appreciate you setting this up. And we will get a chance to talk about wine on the 26th. We and will. uh you know and learn about what you like and we'll film some of that as well i think yeah, that would be a absolutely put it out there um, brilliant let's just i'm going to take that off screen i'm going to press the button that stops this happening thank you ever so much for joining us those of you who've been here live if you're watching it on replay still do put some comments